today let's do dissolution of a partnership firm now first of all let's see what is dissolution uh, I'll write it here dissolution of a firm means that the business is discontinued and the firm is wound up firm is wound up when we say wound up it means the firm is dissolved right so it's basically uh, when when uh, two persons enter into a partnership the partnership agreement is prepared the partnership deed is prepared and the partnership is formed right in case of dissolution the partnership is discontinued okay so now when we look at this dissolution <coughs> A firm can be dissolved in many ways. A firm can be dissolved by mutual agreement of the partners or it can be a compulsory dissolution or it can be a dissolution by the court or maybe because of some event like the death of a partner or if a partner is declared insolvent. In all such cases, the firm may decide to dissolve, right? So now what we will see now is what is the accounting treatment for dissolution? What do we do when a firm is dissolved? <clears throat> first of all, the first account that we will be preparing here is, uh, now before uh, going to that, whenever a partnership is dissolved, right, okay, <clears throat> Whenever a partnership is dissolved, all its assets and liabilities are paid off and the balance is paid to the partners. That is a final settlement to the partners, right? That is the partners accounts are settled right now for doing this that is for transferring all the assets and liabilities and uh, paying of the assets and liabilities the first thing you should know is the preparation of the realization account like in uh, admission of a partner or retirement of a partner we used to make the revaluation account now here it is not revaluation. When we say revaluation, it means the assets are revalued and they are continuing in the business. Now here the pro here the basic thing is the assets and assets have to be realized and the liabilities has to be paid off. Here we make the realization account. Now let's see what we do in this realization account. <coughs> now uh, realization account. Basically, uh, the realization account is a nominal account. And the basic purpose of this account is to determine the profit or loss on realization of assets and payment of liabilities. <clears throat> Now, the journal entries, I'll take up first. So, what all items will come in this realization account? Let's first try to understand it through the journal entries and then we will move on to the ledger. Now, the first thing that you do here is, the first entry in the realization account is closing the assets account or you can say transferring the assets right now here all assets except cash in hand or cash at bank right they are transferred to the realization account
at the book value whatever is the book value whatever value is appearing in the balance sheet that you will put right the journal entry for this is realization account debit <coughs> to assets account you can put the assets individually right okay hmm. this is being assets transferred to realization account right the reason why cash in hand and cash at bank are not transferred to the realization account is that these assets are already in a liquid form you don't need to realize them the assets like your fixed assets or stock uh, or intangible assets like goodwill and all they have to be realized they have to be sold off they have to be realized in cash right but cash in hand and cash at bank are already in liquid form you don't have to realize you don't have to sell them off and realize the value that is the reason why we do not transfer cash in hand and cash at bank right <clears throat> now the second one okay but before doing before going to the second entry uh supposing you have uh, like in the case of uh, debtors right debtors is an asset right but uh, this provision for doubtful debts is a liability in the balance sheet you normally see the um, in the asset side we normally write it as debtors less provision for doubtful debts this is how we put it right now when you uh, transfer this amount to the realization account only the amount that is in front of debtor supposing i say this is 10000 and the uh, less provision for doubtful debts let's say is 500 rupees right so the total amount that is appearing in the balance sheet is actually 9500 on the asset side but when we transfer the assets we transfer the debtor's amount and we transfer this whole amount of 10000 this provision for doubtful debts will go to the liability side right so that is the next entry that we will be taking up for the liabilities so for now this is transferring the assets that is realization to assets account now the second one is transferring the liabilities or you can write it as closing the liabilities accounts right account now here all the liabilities <coughs> that is related to outsiders right remember this all liabilities relating to third party or outsiders are transfer to realization account the entry here is liabilities account again individually we will put debit to realization account now there are certain things which should not be included here like accumulated profit right reserve fund uh then balance of profit and loss account all these will not be transferred capital account of partners again are not transferred because they are not outsiders account right 
outstanding expenses employees provident fund partners spouse loan like partners loan is something different partners spouse loan that should be transferred because that is a third party right okay mm -hmm. so these are the first two entries transferring the assets and liabilities now we come to the third one which is realization of assets realization of assets now the first one here is when the assets are sold for cash they are realized they are sold off and cash is realized for them the accounting entry is cash or bank account debit to realization account right uh, if the asset is taken over by the partner when the asset is taken over by a partner in that case it is instead of cash or bank account you will write partner's capital account debit to realization account right and there is one more case here when the assets when the assets are given to any of the creditors right given to the creditors towards the payment of their dues like supposing the creditor has to be paid rupees 10000 and i have stock worth rupees 10000 the creditor is given that stock right so in that case you will not make any entry because the assets and liabilities are already transferred so now uh, you won't make any entry for that right so as far as realization of assets this is for both uh, recorded as well as unrecorded assets right whether the record whether the asset is recorded or unrecorded you will deal with it in the same way right now the next one is settlement of liabilities settlement of liabilities again recorded unrecorded both right now when you pay the liabilities on payment of liabilities it is basically uh, we are paying it in cash so realization account to cash or bank account and then if a partner agrees to take over the liability if a partner agrees to take over a liability in that case it will be realization account debit to partner's capital account if the liability is paid off in cash then it is to cash or bank account if a partner agrees to take over the liability it is basically partners to partner's capital account right now there are some important points here which you should always remember and uh, in some of the questions uh, the the question is basically silent on the realization of assets or payment of liabilities now you should know that if the question is silent on the realization of assets right so the first thing i'm saying if the question is silent on realization of assets right some some of the assets right okay in that case uh assume that the asset has not realized any amount follow this asset has not realized any amount supposing there are five assets and they have given that three of the assets realize some value and about the uh, i mean for the rest two they haven't uh, given anything in the question so there is no need to put any entry for them it is assumed that the assets have not realized any value right secondly this is uh, for tangible assets and intangible assets here i'll put it as tangible assets right and in case of intangible assets like goodwill um, or patents copyrights whatever here again it is assumed that they have not realized any value if the question is silent on that right <clears throat> for intangible assets again if the question is silent assume that it is not realized right and 
Thirdly, if the question is silent on the settlement of any liability, settlement of any liability, then it is assumed that the amount equal to the book value has been paid. Assume that the amount equal to the book value has been paid. These are important things which should be kept in mind. So you should first of all see all the uh, items that is given in the balance sheet and what all assets and liabilities are being uh, realized and settled and if something is not given in the question you should follow these rules. So now we have looked at the uh, journal entries pertaining to transfer of assets and realization of assets and liabilities. Uh, I'll end today's session with this. In our next session, we will carry for we will continue with this uh, realization account, and I'll take up a question on that.